בעזרת השם. We are standing in this very important day, the ninth day of the month of Av. And everything in this world is very meaningful and very powerful and we must put our mind into it. We know that this day, the day of destruction, day that is waking our memory up to, to see, to remember all of the sorrow and the bloodshed and, and the tears and, and the, the fire, the darkness of thousands of years of exile, millions, millions of, of horrible stories and, and pain and loss and destruction. But the Shalit Barach chose a certain day that's going to be the ninth day of the month that will be called Av to remind us of all the sorrow and the pain. There is one word that I think is the most important word that we received from Hashem for us to use and it's a word that contains all the rest of the words in it and that word is emet, truth. Emet is a word that when you write it in the holy language you write the first letter Aleph in the beginning of emet, of truth. The middle letter of the Aleph Bet of the, the Hebrew, the holy language ABC is Mem, and the last letter is Taf, and that's Emet. Emet holds the beginning, the middle, and the end. All of it, it contains. And Emet is the truth, and the numeral value of the word Emet is nine. Taf is four, and Mem is four, and Aleph is one. So together it becomes nine. And the meaning of the word Tesha, that is Tisha Be'av, Tesha, it's Toshia. It's you're going to redeem us. And that's the truth. The truth is that Hashem Barach is bringing the redemption to our nation. And I know it's very hard for people to get that. And it took me also a long, long time to understand that really we are seeing the redemption with our own eyes. It's very hard to grab. It's very, very hard to understand. But it's happening right now. In front of your eyes you can see the Geula of our nation in every moment of your life. But you need to remember that it's happening, to recognize it. Because many, many times in our life our thoughts are distracted. Things are coming, situations, people, phone calls, things, stress, fears, anxieties, movies, videos, it doesn't matter what. And you take your thoughts out of the purpose of what really goes on in my life. But if really you're going to focus if really you're going to put your mind into the purpose, to the real meaning of things, what really Hashem Yitvach is hinting, what really happens now in my life, you're going to see, you're going to find so much truth in every situation and that truth will bring you closer and closer to Hashem. Until you're going to find the complete truth and you're going to become one with it. So what's the real truth is? The real truth is, like we said, First of all, that Hashem is saving us. He is protecting us and even if you see sorrow and even if you see pain, you can also see that Hashem in Barach chose that unique day to remind you of the sorrow and the pain. A day that contains so much mercy, so much kindness inside of it. And it's hard to recognize 
while your thoughts are going into the sorrow, into the distractions, into the pain, into the screamings, into the tears, into all of the emotional stress and, 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 and pain that you feel. But when you try to put your mind into it and to remind yourself, who is my God? Who is the Creator? The Creator is Father in Heaven and that's why He chose the month of Av. To tell us that the month of Av means Father. That me, the one that also destroy you, I am your Father, means I'm going to heal you. And to have, today I had a very deep conversation with a very f close friend of mine and we got into a point that it was impossible for us to understand. How can it be that the same Father, He's crushing you? He's destroying you. He took the temple, he took lives of children, of innocent people. He destroyed the nation in so many ways. And we still believe that he's so mercy and kind, merciful and kind and, and great. And, and, and it's a huge contradiction. It's a huge battle between good and bad. And if you want to say, okay, so there is the dark side, there is the devil, there is darkness, there is the snake, there is Satan. Okay, but who gives him the authority? Who gives him the power? It goes back to the root. And the root is Hashem. And Hashem, when you ask yourself, okay, so Hashem, where are you? Who are you? So Hashem is kind. So Hashem is good. So Hashem is generous. So Hashem, He loves everyone. So Hashem, He is Father of mercy. So where is the mercy? How can you see the mercy from the pain? How can you see the mercy from the sorrow? How can you see this, the, the greatness of the Creator between the flames of fire? For that you need to focus your mind. For that you need to work so hard. For that you must put your heart into that work, into that labor, and to judge the Creator favorably. And like that you as a parent, like that you as a person, you don't want to hurt no one. But suddenly you find yourself in a situation that you're punishing, that you're rebuking, and it's true. We cannot compare the act that we made, that we did until today, to what the Hashem Barach did. And we want to say that we're worse than Him. But the truth is that when you look at reality and history, Hashem Barach is doing things that you, you, were never going to cross your mind. The Creator, He brought us to situation of destruction that you would never do. Can you see yourself destroying the temple, killing six million Jews in the Holocaust, throwing them into stoves, making tests on, on human beings, medical tests? You wouldn't do that. But Hashem, He did. Because Hashem is on top of everything. And we believe in Him. So how can it be? And we're not allowed to ignore those questions because they're bringing us to an embarrassment, to a place that we don't know how to answer. If it's one of your questions, so you need to ask that question all the way until the one that owns the answer, until the one that have the wisdom will answer you. And it doesn't mean that you don't believe if you ask. Even the angels are standing in front of Hashem and they're asking, where is his place that we're going to admire him? Means that they felt that they cannot admire him yet. And they're asking, where are you? We want to admire you, but where are you? They were asking, where are you? So it's not a shame to ask, where are you? I cannot find you. If you find yourself in darkness and you want to see the light, you're allowed to ask. I cannot see the light. It shows on your faith. That's the biggest evidence that you do believe. Not that you don't believe. If you still ask to see Hashem, to understand His wisdom, to see what is behind, what was His intention, what is going on here, it means that you do want to see the truth. It means that you still have faith. And those questions are so important because for a person that was very far, 
And now he decided to come closer to Hashem. How are we going to call him? A Baal Tshuva, a person that owns an answer. Why he got an answer? Why he been answered? Because he dared to ask questions that all of his friends and his family couldn't ask. They never dared to ask. They rather to say, no, it's not exist, and to, to, to find that easy solution and not to deal with those deep questions. No, me, I'm not thinking. No, I don't, can, I, I don't put my mind into it. No, I'm enjoying life. Why? Because they, those people that are still far, they didn't find that desire for the truth like that person that decided to go all the way to find the answer. So he is brave for asking questions. And that's why he been answered. And now he found Judaism. And now he found the truth. And he wants to do more. And he wants to come closer and closer to Hashem. Because he is now being answered. Because that he had the power, the strength, the courage to ask the hardest questions. Hey, who am I? Is this, is this the purpose of my life? That's how I should spend my days, my nights. That's what I should do. All of his friends were pressuring him. Hey, you must come. Let's go. Let's hang out. Let's do this. Let's do that. And he was standing and fighting and telling, No, I don't want to do that tonight. I don't want to. I want to go and learn. I feel like I need to do something else. And he starts seeking and looking for holiness in his life against all of the darkness that was trying to overpower him. And he was strong by asking those hard questions, embarrassing questions, dealing and confronting the embarrassing truth of being so far, of being so low, of being so filthy, so impure, so contaminated, so disgusting sometimes, but able to admit and to say, yes, I was wrong, and to apologize, and to do tshuva, and to come back to Hashem, and to ask, how can I fix, what should I do, and to be embarrassed and ask, what's the halacha, what's the Jewish law, what should I do, and to be very ashamed, going to shul, and trying to pray, and don't know how to pronounce, and don't know which bracha to say, and all of those humiliating things that you go through as a bad tshuva in life, are showing your dedication, are showing your will, to come closer to Hashem. So now, after five years of tshuva, ten years of tshuva, twenty years of tshuva, you must continue the tshuva. So you must continue asking those hard questions until we all as a nation gonna be answered completely. And then we're gonna see the light. Then we're gonna see the seal of Hashem, that His seal is the seal of truth. And he will reveal his loving kindness, and he's the one that is also able to answer all of our questions. What's the reason that the person is asking a question? Because his lack of knowledge. Why we're lack of knowledge? Because we're limited. Because Hashem made us limited. So we're questioning. So we're doubting. So we're seeking. Because we're lack of things. We want to fulfill our needs. We want to know things that we lack of that knowledge. So we're going and asking and, and begging and looking and searching until we find. You find your meal. You find your shul. You find your, your, your tshuva. You found that book. You find your shiduch. You find our, your house. Because you will lack of all of those things. Hashem Barach made us in that way that we're going to lack of something very, very big, and that we're going to complete it one step after the other. What brought you till today? Your desire to achieve things, to want to complete yourself, to learn more, to be happier, to be more successful, not to fail anymore. The energy that makes the world run and, and progress and continue is the will. So if you came in your tshuva to a position that now you feel satisfied, no, I know exactly what I'm doing, so you lost your will, so you're not going to be answered again. You're not going to be answered ever again. If you came to that place that you say, that's the place that I want to sit in, that's it. I have my shul, 
I have my community, I have my Dafa Yomi, I have my Minyanim, I'm married, my wife, she never rebukes me, I slapped her once and that's it, and she's not talking anymore, it's great, we have peace in our house, I brought her to pieces once and she got the lesson, no problem anymore, kids are in yeshiva, some are in the camp, no problem, money, father-in-law is sending, everything is perfect, you're not going to grow. Maybe it's perfect for you, but you're not going to develop anymore. That's where you stop. Only when you're checking yourself, only when you're checking, hey, what's going on? Maybe I'm lack of something. Hey, maybe I need to do something. Hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I was not completing my tshuva. Only then you're going to be answered more. And spirituality is your connection to infinity, to an endless amount of knowledge, of wisdom, of purity, of pleasure, of satisfaction, of joy, of closeness to Hashem. So you're not allowed to stop. You're not allowed to stop your process of tshuva and to keep on searching and asking what else I can do for you Hashem? What else I can do for you Hashem? What else I can do today? What else you want me to do? What I cannot see with my eyes? I remember once I saw in a book on a righteous man, I don't remember his name, he was standing and crying to Hashem, how can it be that you gave me my eyes, that those eyes came down to this world from from the eyes of God that they are going and looking in the wide world. The eyes of Hashem that can see into the rooms of your heart, that can see in the dark, that can see everything that nothing can hide from those eyes. And from those eyes I received my eyes. The power of vision is the power of God that He handed to you, that He handed to His creations. And now, how can it be that those holy eyes cannot see through walls? Because the eyes of Hashem, they can see through walls. So how can it be that I defected my eyes in a way that I cannot see through walls? I am blocking the vision of Hashem, the power of vision of Hashem. Hashem wants to look at the world through my eyes. Hashem wants to go into the world through my body, through myself. What is your soul, if not your connection to the Creator, that the Creator is revealing His light through you, and He chose you to do it. And your job is only not to disturb Him, to let Him express Himself through you, and not to be lazy, and to be proud of that part of soul that you have inside of yourself, and to understand that it is Chelech Eloka Mimal, it's part of heaven that comes from above, and that's who that you are. You have Neshama Elokit, you have a godly soul, every single one of us. The light of Hashem is shining through us, and we must not block it by being afraid, and following people that are terrified from the shadows that are attacking them, and now they're going to go and blame everyone else on, on being so f afraid and so scared and, and not honest. When you rebuke someone else, check yourself. When you go and shame someone else, go check yourself. In 99.9 .9 of the cases, you're blaming other people in your own lackings, in your own defaults. That's what you do. When you see a lacking in someone else and you go and you rebuke him and you're talking about him, and you think negative on him and you say bad things on him, look at the mirror. You're talking about yourself. I'm going to ask you now. And I'm ready to do tshuva with you now, live on Facebook. Not afraid. You want to say that Hashem is cruel? Okay, let's see that you're not cruel. Can you talk about Hashem's cruelty? Check yourself. Maybe you're also very, very cruel. Okay, you say Hashem Ibrahim, he doesn't give money, he's cheap. Okay, check yourself. Are you so generous that now you can talk about Hashem? I'm not sure. What that I am sure is that in that moment that you're really going to fix yourself completely, you're going to bring redemption. You're going to bring Mashiach. 
when you will clean yourself completely to be 100% clean, that will be the moment, that will be the time that Mashiach will reveal himself in the world. It depends on you. But when you are not clean, you cannot talk. And it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to talk. Just you need to aim your words to the right directions. You must talk about yourself. You must do tshuva. You must focus in your part on how to clean the world from your place. How to clean your mind. How to clean your brain. How to fix your soul. How to bring yourself to that place that you will make other people happy. And then after you did that, after that you open that channel, that you open that connection for people to find Hashem Barach in their lives, in that moment you can go and claim and argue with Hashem and start demand from Hashem and tell Hashem Barach what you want. And then Ratzon Yeravia said, then Hashem will follow your will. But only after that you clean yourself. Shot at Tzmechat you need to fix Tchila, you must fix yourself. First of all, you must clean yourself. A person must learn how to judge himself, that he will judge himself favorably. And he's really going to find the real truth. And not just going to blame himself and going to hate himself and going to punish himself and, and, and rebuke himself to death. Just really going to try to find the root, the reason. Why am I suffering? Why am I going through that kind of hell? What can I do to fix it? What can I do to help other people? What can I do for this creation? What is my part? What is my job? What is my real obligation? What Hashem expects me to do? What can I do? Really what can I do? Not what people tell me that I should do. What really I feel that is in my powers to do. Where I can benefit other people, how I can help, how can I assist? What can I do for you? What can I do for you? What can I do for him? What can I do for them? If you walk in the street and you see a hungry homeless, you don't need to go and do prayers for him to be rich, to be wealthy. You need to go and buy him a sandwich. You need now to go and grab some dinner, some lunch, and to put between his feet and to let him eat. In every situation, you need to ask yourself, how can I help that person? Why Hashem Barach brought those couple in front of my eyes? Why Hashem Barach brought me this night to this synagogue? Why Hashem Barach brought me to drive in that car? Why in this street? Why? What's going on? What is the message? What is my mission? Where is the wisdom that is hidden between and behind all of those curtains? When you're going to have that desire to know the truth, you will be answered. Because Hashem is going to answer your prayers because Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. And when you will be honest and going to uncover your heart, you're going to uncover the heart of Hashem. You're going to uncover the real will of the Creator that is shining through you. And the light of Hashem will shine from your face. Beams of light will come out of your eyes. People won't be able to look at your face because of your holiness, because of your purity, exactly like that it was with Moshe. And if it's hard for you to believe me because you say, hey, come on, Moshe was so holy. There was a righteous man. And if you don't want to compare yourself to him, so I don't know what, why, why you fell to that despair. There was a huge Tana, a huge holy righteous man. His name was Rabbi Eliezer Agadol. He was the rabbi of Rabbi Akiva. Oh, to compare ourselves to him, come on. Now you exaggerated for sure, right? No. You know why? Because there is a book. And in that book, it's a Midrash. The name of that book is Pirke de Rabbi Eliezer. It's chapters, story from the life of Rabbi Eliezer. That Rabbi Eliezer Agadol, Rabbi Eliezer Ben Horkinus, the one that in the end of his life, when he was adult, when he was very, very old and wise, he became the Rabbi of Rabbi Akiva. That Rabbi Akiva was the Rabbi of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Yes, yes. Who was that Rabbi Eliezer Ben Horkinus, Rabbi Eliezer Agadol? That Rabbi Eliezer was a Baal Tshuva that when he was 27 years old, he didn't know how to say Kiyat Shema and how to say Birkat Amazon. When he was 27 years old, he didn't know how to learn how to do, how to keep the minimum of the Alachot when he was 27. 
So what he did, he was crying to Hashem. Can you cry to Hashem? Yes, you can. What's the problem? What is stopping you from crying to Hashem that you don't care? But if you're going to care, you're going to cry. To bring yourself to that place that you're going to care, it is in your power. You don't need to be Eliezer Agadol. You need to be Lazer. You need to be Eliezer. They can call you Eli. They can call you lazy. I don't care how they're going to call you. If you're going to be honest and you're really going to seek for the truth and you're going to want it with all of your heart, you're going to be answered. You're going to receive it. You don't need no rabbi to testify on you that you're holy to become holy. You don't need no one to say on you who that you are. You need Hashem to see your heart. And when your heart is pure, you're pure. And when your heart is with Hashem, Hashem is with you. And when Hashem is with you, you don't have enemies. Hashem is fighting for you. People that will try to attack you are going to be run by, by trucks. You, you don't, you're not going to meet them. You're not going to see them. You're not going to hear what happened to them. You're just going to go. You won't have time to hear the stories that people will come to try to tell you. You're going to say, I have a class to give. I don't have the time for those nonsense. I'm serving Hashem. I'm keeping my purpose. I'm doing my thing. Me and Hashem are one. I don't need no one to confirm it. I don't need no one to agree on that. I have Hashem that is supporting me. I saw the miracles with my own eyes. And every one of you saw His miracles. And every one of you can say, hey, I saw Hashem. Hashem is with me. I know, I saw Hashem. Last month he paid my mortgage. Last time he paid my rent. Last time he, he, he bought me all the things I needed for Pesach, for Shavuot. Uh, I saw it. Hashem bought me a ticket to Uman. I saw Hashem. He bought me a suit for Shabbat. I saw it. I saw Hashem. Elokim. Yes, we're learning it from Yechezkel Anavi, from the Prophet Yechezkel. Yeah, we can learn it from him. But he taught us that wisdom for ourselves. So yes, he said, Elokim. But we can also see God. There was one wise guy that came to argue with Rabbi Nathan of Breslev, and he started bringing proofs and evidence to his theory that Hashem is not exist, Chas Shalom. And he's arguing and arguing and bringing proofs on nature and to show, and then on a crazy conversation. And Rabbi Nathan wanted to run away. He didn't have the power to deal with this crazy situation. Just leave me alone. And in the end, from all of the pressure, he looked at him. Rabbi Nathan looked at him. Rabbi Nathan was not a prophet. Rabbi Nathan is not one of the books of the, of, of the of prophets in, in the Tanakh. It's not one of the 24 books. Rabbi Nathan is 180 years ago in Ukraine. Ashkenazi, Bachur, Pashut, regular, sympathetic guy, nice student of Rabbi Nathan of Breslev. A Breslev and Hasid, a sugar. A machine in a Breslev. They're regular, Pashut, simple, regular person. And he looked at that person and he told him, I'm telling you, I see God. What are you talking about? There is a story about two Talmidei Chachamim that were learning and sitting and suddenly they came to that crazy thought, maybe it's all a lie. Maybe it's all a fake. Maybe all of the Gemarot are just stories. Maybe those Tanaim and Amorim were just faking it. Maybe it's not real. And they start learning. And trying to understand their kushiyat, their doubt. Hey, maybe it's not exist. Maybe really it's not all true. Maybe it's all a fake. Maybe it's all just a scam. And they're learning and learning into the night. And they came to the early hours of dawn, of sunrise. And that's it. It was clear like the sun. It's all a lie. There is no Hashem. There is no Torah. There was no Mahmoud Sinai. No Moshe Rabbeinu. Gmarot is all a fake. Nothing is real. 100% they found evidence from the verses, from the Mishnayot, from the Gemara. There is no Hashem. There is no Torah. There is no Shabbat. No Kashrut. And one is asking the other, are you sure? He said, yes, look, it's clear, 100%. And they're shaking hands and they're happy. We got the secret, we got the truth, that's it. We're free from all of this nonsense, from all of this yoke. That's it, we're free to go. And they're so happy. We're in their suits, their hats. Everyone are ready to go back home to tell the great news to their wives. One of them suddenly goes to the water, fills the natla, the cup, with water, and makes the tilat yadayim. 
So his friend asked him, hey, what are you doing? He says, what, 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 what do you want? He said, you're washing your hands. We just realized that it's all alive, that it's all fake. He said, yeah, but what's the connection between what the three thought to the fact that we are obligated and we must wash our hands? To be a Jew is something that is stuck in your heart and you cannot move away from it. If you move yourself away from Judaism, it's because that you did something on purpose. It's because that you moved yourself from it. You can stay a Jew and not to be able to function at all and to stay a Jew. You just need to want. To be a Jew, you can go, chas shalom, and to be part of that horrible train that goes to Auschwitz and to die naked, barefoot, with all the sorrow and trauma and still to be called a Jew. Those damn Nazis, they were slaughtering even a third generation of a person that his father was Jewish. So even us, the Jews, from the halachic side, the Jewish rule, we're going to say that that person for sure is not Jew. Three generations he's already been erased from our books, from our legacy, from our tree of life. But the Nazis, the Sitracha, the devil, the snake, he still sees something holy in that person, so he must put him into the stove. We cannot see what the devil can see, that you're a Jew and that your soul is holy. And you must find that holiness inside of yourself and to be proud, even to be sacrificed, alive, to die for Hashem. Who cares if Hashem will help you, not going to help you? What the truth is, there is Hashem, you believe, that's it. All the rest is stories. He gave you the money, didn't give you the money. You got married, didn't get married. You have holy children, your children are broke and not learning Torah. It's a different story. What do you want to do with your life? Do you want to serve? Serve. No one is stopping you. Stop making up stories. You want to wake up in the morning or you want to tell your friends why it was so hard for you to wake up in the morning? What do you choose? Oh, you went to go sleep late. What's the reason? You know there is a reason. You were watching YouTube till the middle of the night. You were searching for amazing things on Facebook till the middle of the night. Don't blame me. Don't blame yourself. Go to the roots of reality. You had a reason. You had to work very late. Great, I'm not blaming you. Why are you blaming yourself? I'm not praying in a minion. Okay, you're not able. Maybe the halacha is exempting you from praying in a minion in the morning. If really you're working in the minion till the middle of the night, maybe it's okay for you. So if really it is okay for you, so you should be okay with it because it's okay for you. Hashem said it. We're not making up halachot and rules. If a person is anus and he's not able and he's too busy and he's too occupied and he's keeping another mitzvah or oh, that he's just dead tired and he cannot function. So no one is blaming him except of crazy people that are blaming everyone and blaming themselves and hating everyone and hating themselves and you don't need to follow them anyway so everything is cool. So you can be f happy with yourself happy with your share, not waking up in the morning and doing the best that you can for your family. And it's really all good. Only you can find what's real and what the truth is. If you will have a point of truth to check the truth. And if you're not able to wake up in the morning and there is a reason for that, so there is a reason for that. And it's okay. And Hashem is not going to punish you. Because Hashem is not cruel. Hashem is not crazy. Hashem is your Father of mercy. Hashem will help and guide us all to complete the redemption and to see wonders that have not been seen in the redemption that we came out of Egypt. It's true, we don't understand what we're talking about, but we gonna. It's already started. It's a process that is about to complete. Because look at their weakness. Look at us. Who am I? Who are you? Where you came from? How all of those mushrooms came out after the rain? How did we all came up here? Suddenly we're in the Bet Knesset. Where have you been 20 years ago? Where have you been 5 years ago? Where have you been 7 years ago? Where have you been in Motzei Tisha Be'av, in Tisha Be'av 7 years ago, 13 years ago? Where did Ribbono Shalom did you came here from? Where did you came from? Was it the plan? Was it in your plan? Were you thinking about it? Were you hoping for it? Or that someone else woke you up? Me, for sure, 100% someone else woke me up. I didn't know. 
I couldn't feel that people were waking me up, that Hashem Itbarach is waking me up in the beginning of my awakeness. I didn't recognize the signs. I was ignoring the hints for years. And then it hits me. Why? Because Hashem decided to make another move, to get stronger with me, to open my eyes more. So he had to use more force, more power, more volume, more effort to wake me up. And finally he did. And do you think that he stopped? No. Trust me, he didn't. Every day I'm being rebuked. Every day I'm being slaughtered. Every day I'm being insulted. Every day I see my lackings and it's only good. I see that it's good. What the fact and the evidence that I see that it's good, that I'm continuing. If I would feel that it's bad, I would stop. Trust me, I would stop. If I wouldn't want to do what that I'm doing, me, myself, I'm not working for no one. I'm not even working for him, if you're going to ask me the truth. I just feel committed. I just love him. I just want to help him. That's why I'm doing things for him. Only out of love. I'm not afraid of him in a bit. I don't have no fear. Because I feel that I hold the truth. I'm ready even to talk to him about the truth like I'm doing on a daily basis. For me, the difference between this world to the world to come is not exist. I'm going to continue the same conversation that I'm having with him in this world, in the world to come. What's the difference? If you believe in Hashem, so you live your life with Hashem. And then you're going to see Hashem clearly, more clear. Okay, so what's the difference? So, welcome, thank you, I love you, and if you have fear from heaven, great, so bow and surrender and give up and say, oh, it is yours. 100%, great, no problem. But just be who that you really are. And if you really want to commit yourself to Hashem, and if you really want to throw yourself on Hashem, and if you really truly believe that He is Father of mercy, so you must ask some questions. What in the world is going on with this world? Where is Hashem if Hashem is so kind? What's going on in this world if Hashem is so good, if Hashem is so mercy, if Hashem is so great, where is He? Why is He hiding Himself from the sick? Why is He hiding Himself from the poor? Why is He hiding Himself from, from, the, from, from the nations? Why is He hiding Himself from me? Why for my wife? Why for my children? Why do we not deserve to receive all the bounty? What's going on with us, with Him? What's going on? What's the answer? If you will want the answer, you will be answered. If you will ask those questions, you will be answered. The proof for that is that you came today to this class and Hashem opened your eyes a little bit more. And then tomorrow you're going to go with those bigger vessels to learn something else. And you're going to continue. And you're going to go further and further, closer and closer to Hashem for the rest of your life. And that's the reward of the world to come. That in the world to come, it's just going to continue. And like Rabbi Nachman of Breslav is saying, When a person, he knows that whatever he goes through in life is for the good, it's all planned by Hashem. So that aspect, it's like to, like to live in the world to come. What does it mean? That in the world to come, you're just going to grow and grow and grow and develop and, and, and expand and enjoy more and going to contain more and going to receive more, going to know more, going to feel more and more and more and more. That's the world to come. That's the nature of life in heaven. That you're just going to have more and more and more. And if you know that everything that you go through in life is for the good, so anyway you're receiving more, because it's all for the good. Even the difficulties, even the sorrow, even the pain, even the destructions, even the horrible humiliations that we're going through, if your desire is to learn and to come closer to Hashem, so you can come closer to Hashem from every place in the world, what you need to do? Say, Hashem, that's it. Finish the story. You want to be close to Hashem? What do you need to do for that? Finish Masechet Brachot, finish Masechet Shabbat, Masechet Pe'ah, Masechet Betzah. What do you need to do if you want to be close to Hashem? Where is Hashem? I'm asking you, where is Hashem? Here and now, right? Do you need to go somewhere to meet Hashem? Let's go. Where is He? Where you found Him? Where you see Him? Hashem, where are you? Oh, you're here. Melokolar is Kevodo. He's filling the world. He's inside all worlds. He's surrounding all the worlds. 
Leit atar panui mine, there is no place that his godliness is empty from. He is inside all the worlds. He is inside the darkest places. Even if I'm going to go in the valley of death, I will see you, Hashem. Even if I'm going to reach the rock bottom of hell, I'm going to see that you are here. So where is Hashem? With you, right? Where in, with you? Beside you, to your right, to your left, on your shoulders, or behind your back. Where is Hashem? Surrounding you completely, right? And also inside of you. He lives inside of you. So what you have to look outside? You have Hashem inside. Where inside? In the neshama, in your soul. So just keep on breathing. Neshima, that's to breathe. Just breathe. Neshama, you breathe your soul. You bring your soul inside when you're breathing. Avir, the air, it's like the word O oh, brings the light into your body. You can purify yourself. What you just need to do, you need to breathe. You need to relax. You need to do hit bodedut, hit bonenut, meditation, relaxation. Do whatever you need to do to come back to reality that Hashem is with you. If you like it and if you don't. If you feel comfortable with it and if you don't. Hashem is not something that you can avoid. Hashem is not something that you can run away from. If you want it and if you don't. If you feel it and if you don't. Hashem is with you. The question is what you're going to do with it. What you want to do with it. Because you're going to do what that you want to do. They're helping you to walk in the path that you choose, that you want to go in. No, I didn't choose that. Yes, it did. Maybe you don't want to accept it. But the answer is yes, you did. No, but I'm so poor, I want to be rich. No. The truth is that you hate yourself and you curse yourself day and night and you want to revenge yourself because you cannot forgive yourself and you're punishing yourself and you're destroying yourself and you're causing yourself a lot of damage and you know that but you don't want to admit that and yes you chose the words that you said and yes you chose the actions that you took and yes, you chose many, many of the things that you rather to blame other people and even Hashem on those things. But you chose. And it's your responsibility. And it's not bad. Because if you're going to investigate and really going to check, you're going to recognize that there is a very, very kind, loving hand that is guiding you from heaven even to make mistakes. Because those mistakes are humbling you and bringing you to the recognition, to the understanding that you need Him, that you need Hashem. And without that understanding, you don't have no existence. The Zohar Kadosh is saying that before that the person starts to do tshuva, he doesn't have no existence in this world. The existence starts when you start doing tshuva. You become part of the creation. You come back to Hashem. Before you with Hashem, you're separated from Hashem. You don't have no existence because only He is life and exists. And if you feel separated, and if you are separated, so you're just in darkness. You're just not alive. You're dead. Dead people walking. Dead. Dead in their life. Dead in their death. Can't feel. Can't see. Can't smell. Can't sense anything. But when you want Hashem, and when you call Hashem, suddenly you see Him. And yes, sometimes it takes time. You know, when you want to buy a sneakers, when you want to buy a Coke, you just go and you pay $5 to $3, and that's it, you have it. But if you want to buy a house, so you understand that it's going to take you a little bit longer. Why? Because the house is a bigger thing than, than a chocolate bar, than a drink. So you can understand that it's or a mortgage for 20 or 30 years or that you're going to have to work for a few years until you're going to save enough money to buy a house. Great, you understand it. Why? Because it's so big. And the salvations that we are asking for ourselves, are they small? I'm asking you. Are they small? 
No, me, I'm not asking for much. What are you asking? Tell me, come on, what are you asking? No, me, I just want to learn for a couple of hours every day. I just want to pray in a minyan. I just want to go to mikveh. I just want to have enough money to pay for my children tuition that they're all going to learn in Jewish school, going to marry Jewish wives, that they all, I'm going to be able to support them and help them to buy a house in our area or in a better area, that my wife won't be on my neck, that I'll be able to supply to give her whatever she needs. Okay, great. I also want to be holy. I want to be pure. I want to be in woman every year. I want to do very nice holidays, I want to invite some guests, I want to drive a new car, I'm not asking for much. Yeah, you forgot to say that you want it all to be in Israel, right? Yeah, I'm not asking for much. Jerusalem, yeah, I know, no problem. Tiny, sneakers, chocolate bar, ah, that's it, finish. No, you're asking for huge things, right? Okay, so it takes time to deliver. It's coming. I promise you, it's on the way. You don't believe me, that's your problem. But I'm telling you it's on the way. I already see that light. And what's the proof? The proof is that I'm standing here. I am that light. Not because that I am a Sheikh Tzidken. Only because that I am a miracle of Hashem. Because I'm not belong here. Where in the world I came to fall from. I was clubbing until I was 20 years old. I was eating trafe, I was drinking, I was smoking weed, I was doing drugs, I was spending my, my life in outside. And suddenly Hashem Barach whistled, Hashem Barach called me, and that's it. And now I'm a walking flame of fire that no one can turn off. Why? Because Hashem Barach lit my soul in fire and there is nothing that you can do about it. Maybe you can ignore it. Maybe you can do whatever you think that you're able to do. Maximum, you can be run by trucks if you're going to try to hurt me. <laughs> I'm with Hashem. You're fighting with Him. You're not fighting with me. I'm happy. You're suffering, not you, Chas Shalom. A person that is hard for him to accept. Oh, Baal Tshuva. Okay, I'm sorry. It's Gemarot. Gemara Meforeshet is saying, Hizaru b'bnei aniim kemehem tetzet Torah. What do you want from me? I didn't write those verses. And if it's hard for someone to digest, to accept, okay, so he can go, I'll help him. I'll explain to him exactly how things work. I love him. You think I don't love him? My wife thinks I'm crazy. She's saying you love everyone. I don't understand. How can you love everyone? I don't know. Hashem made it like, I'm me, I need the food, I'm a sugar, I love everyone. I love everyone, I'm the, I'm a much the food, the food, the food, the food, I'm messed up. I love everyone, I don't know why. Hashem did it like that. Even people that don't love me, that hate me, I love them. I think they're just, they messed up, I don't know what. They're in darkness. But me, I love them. What's the problem? So he doesn't see what that I see, what that you see. I didn't do anything bad to no one for years. From the beginning of my tshuva, I'm just running and helping every single person I know. And the people that I felt that I owe them something, oh, I paid big time, I promise you. I gave and I'm still giving. I care, I love. That's my defect. I'm doing tshuva on that. Trying to please my wife that she can understand that she lives with a crazy person. What can I do? That's my tikkun. I'm trying to fix myself, to be normal, to be sane. And you think that I'm unique? I'm telling you it's a joke. I'm nothing. I'm not unique at all. It's just the light of Hashem Barach that is shining through me because I'm trying with all of my power not to interfere, not to interrupt. Just Hashem, do your thing, do your job. Hashem, heal everyone. And that's it. And then healing is going to everyone. And then Parnassah and Shefa and wisdom. And you can see. We're not writing the comments on our Facebook. We're not writing the comments on our YouTubes. You're going to see people that are saying, wow, you must share this class. It's a life-saving class. That class saved my life. Hey, I'm sharing. Guys, everyone. Why? Because people feel that light. You know, once I received, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm apologizing. Last thing I'm going to say about myself tonight. Once a person wrote an email, and for me, it was a crazy email. For me, 
as a person, it was a crazy sick email. I said, I'm, we're receiving many sick emails. It's okay. But that person wrote an email. He said in his email, when I see Rav Dror speaks, I see flames of fire coming out of his face, thunders and, 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 and lightnings coming out of his eyes and mouth. And, okay, uh, for me, I'm telling you the truth. For me, it was a crazy email. That was my first thought. Crazy email. I ignored it. But after a while, it came to my mind, okay, you think that he's crazy, but do you realize that that person, when he, he, that crazy person, was sitting in front of the screen, that what did he saw? Because or else, if you wouldn't feel that, if you wouldn't sense that, you wouldn't write that crazy email. So, is it so crazy? Or that you're crazy? And I think that I was crazy, to think that he's crazy. Because if he felt that, so it means that Hashem and Barach was doing things for him, and really, it's not connected to me. I don't control fire and lightnings and, and thunders. No, it's not in my power. I'm not shooting thunders and, and, and nothing. I don't know. I'm just, I just, I just got here. <laughs> I'm not connected to all of that. But if a person feels such an illumination and such light in his life, it means that someone in heaven is taking care of him and helping him. And I don't care that it will come through me. I love him. I want him to succeed. And I'm happy for Hashem that his children are waking up. It's a celebration. I'm happy. But it's not that we're making wonders, that we're making miracles. It's Hashem. And Hashem is running the world. And the world is in a very deep process of redemption. Wake up. Realize the positive light that you experience in your life is rare, is original, is new, is very, very, very beyond this world, is very unique, very spiritual. Your awakeness, the fact that you find light in books, that you find the traction to shul, that you see tzitzit, and you say, hey, wow, I have to get one. What? You? Are you crazy? You're out of your mind? What do you have in those crazy? I remember myself, beginning of Chuba, I would see people with talitot, with tzitziot. I was fascinated. Nothing. What there is in it? I don't know. I saw Shem. I saw the light. Which light? Desire for tzitzit is light. Desire to hold a sido, it's a light. Desire to learn a page of Gemara, that's light. Desire for honesty, that's light. To want to be generous, that's light. When you want to benefit yourself, to become a better person, that is the light of Hashem that is changing you from inside. It's a process of redemption. You're coming out of your darkness and you become a better person. It means that you're completing your tshuva, that you become one with the Creator. And when more souls are going to attach, more souls are going to, are going to make the, the wisdom spread, and the circle is going to grow, in one minute the numbers are growing wildly. One person is teaching now. How many students I see in front of my eyes? Something like 20, something like 30. Over there, you know, on Facebook, already now, we have something like 1,000 views. So, it's a circle, right? That's my first circle. And when those circles are sharing, those 1,000 number, 1,000 becomes 100,000. And when the 100,000 will share, so then you come to millions. And when millions are sharing, you have billions. You need one viral video to bring redemption. We don't get it fully. One strong, crazy, powerful video will change the world, will break the world to half, will expose the light of Hashem in the world, and all the creation going to follow the light. It's a one-moment decision of the Creator. It's not in my power or in yours. It's in His hands. What we need to do, just let Him in. Welcome, Hashem. Okay. Now you've been rebuked. Welcome, Hashem. Now you've been insulted. Welcome. 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 What's the message? What are you trying to teach me? If you want honor, you cannot learn. If you want money, you cannot learn. If you want to enjoy, you cannot learn. Learn. 
Only if you want to learn, you can learn. Only when you desire the wisdom, the divine wisdom, then you're open to receive the wisdom and you're going to receive it. Because in the path that the person wants to walk in, that's the path that they're leading him in. So if you're going to want to complete your tshuva and to be righteous, that's what that will happen to you. Like that it happened to me. Because I wanted it with all of my heart. And today I don't have time to sin. It doesn't cross my mind. I just don't have the time for it. I'm just too busy on doing good. And I bless you all to do only good in your life. And to succeed. And to be pure and to be holy and to be happy. And to understand and accept yourself that you need to go through your process of life. That that is the process and the path that you need to walk in to accomplish your redemption, to achieve your humility, to become one with Hashem, to believe in Him in a happy heart and a wishing soul, with a complete huge smile, feeling of perfection, feeling good with yourself. You are you. You need to become the real you, to let Hashem bloom and shine and rise from your heart, from your mouth. That your mouth will speak the words of Hashem. That your eyes will see the good in the creation. That your ears will hear the good news from all their beloved ones. So for that you need to open, to bring the Hashem into your life. To move yourself, your selfishness, to the sides. To let Hashem express Himself through you. Sometimes it's in, in, in satisfaction and in joy and, and it's a huge pleasure. And sometimes it's to learn something in a difficult hour through humiliation and through a rebuke. But if you want to learn, so it's the same message from the same tutor, from the same teacher. One time he will teach you Masachet Brachot and one time he will teach you Masachet Makot. Thank you for being so hard on us in the end of the class. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. May Hashem build, rebuild the third temple for all of us, that all of the nations will come and bow him and will call him with a happy heart and wishing so. Amen. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.